All right, so on a lot of websites, you've probably seen some type of contact us form. And when a client or a user fills in their information and clicks that submit button, you want to get that information and basically store it somewhere in your server or have that information forwarded to your like Gmail email account. Um, and to implement this yourself, you have to know Node and you have to build out like a Node Mailer, Express API and have an endpoint and get it deployed and do all this stuff. But if that sounds like too much work and you don't want to manage all that, a better solution would be to use a third-party service. So what I'm going to show you is how to hook in this form to a, a service called FormSubmit. So FormSubmit.co, and it's extremely easy to get going. You literally just paste this form into your page, and you paste the email that you want this data to be forwarded to. So for an example, if I put this in my page and put like my email address, I'm actually going to get this data when the person clicks the submit button. Um, super easy to get going. It really is just like a two second setup. And then also I'm going to show you, I am using my site with Boots Watch. This is a cool site where you have like bootstrap themes. So I'm using bootstrap to kind of like make this layout and make it look better. Um, and then also undraw.com is a cool site where you can get free icons to put on your page. That is where that mail icon is coming from. All right, so let me just go ahead and show you the code real quick. I'm not going to do a live coding session. I'm just going to show you the code and hopefully it all makes sense. All right, so we have an index file here and notice that we are importing that bootstrap file which we got from this boots watch. I literally just clicked on this and copied as link and then pasted it as a style sheet that's going to be imported. And that gives us access to a bunch of different classes that we can use to style our page. So you see here we have like a nav bar, um, but this isn't a bootstrap tutorial. This is a how to how to use form submit slash forward your information to your email. So let's look at the form itself because that is the important part. So like I showed you on that site, I literally copied that code and pasted it in. We have a form which has an action attribute. What this does is basically saying, hey, when someone submits this form, throw all the data or push all the data to this URL, right? So this is formsubmit.co slash, and then this is the temporary email that I created. I don't want to use my real email for you all to email me, but I made a temporary email here. And then we're saying also use the method post. So this is just how you typically do, um, you can set up server side rendered forms and stuff, but all right, so the next important part is now that we have the form set up, we need to actually create some inputs. So we have these different inputs like full name. And for all these inputs, make sure you have a name attribute so that the form submit knows what key value pairs this end over. And we'll, we'll see this in action in just a second. But notice that we have a name here. We have an email input. We have a phone input. And then we have a message input. And then lastly, we have a button with type submit. So this is your normal HTML5 form. There's nothing too special about this other than I'm using Bootstrap to style it. But the cool part is if I go over here and just go ahead and fill it out, I'll just type in some example stuff. Example at example.com and then hello world. If I show you this, make sure that you have your network tab open and you have preserve logs set and filter for form submit.co. So now if I click submit, you will see a request to that endpoint here. It's doing a post request, which is just another HTML5 request. But the important part is down here, we have the form data. So this is the information that the user actually typed in to their input boxes. And that's being forwarded to a different third party service. So form submit.co is getting that information and they're saying, hey, we got the info, but we need to activate your account, activate your form. So if you go back to your email, this, is, this happens the first time that you do this. After you set it up, you don't have to do this again. So let's click on the email that got sent to this temporary email. And you'll see that they said, hey, like we activated your form. Make sure you replace your email with this string. So let's go back and replace um, this here. So they're saying you need to paste this into your email so that people can't see what your actual email is. You want to keep that hidden. And also they might use this token to kind of uniquely identify your form submission. All right, so now that you've done that, Make sure you click activate form that tells formsubmit.co that the form is ready to be used. All right, let's go back and fill out this form one more time. And hello world, click submit. And that's gonna take you to the formsubmit.co site. Make sure you click on I'm not a robot. This is a nice little feature they have so that people can't spam your emails with contact requests. 
and you'll see a thanks if everything works fine and you can redirect the user back to your home page if you want to. But the important part is if you go back to the email and if we click on refresh, we'll see that we have a new submission here. So let's go ahead and click on this. And you'll see in the email itself, we have the information that the user typed into the form. We have their name, email, a phone, which is optional, and then their message. So that's how easy it is to set up your contact form and have it email you. I could have replaced this with a Gmail account email so that I can actually like keep track of this or a business account email. But yeah, if you're a beginner and you're just making a website, I highly recommend this is free, I believe. But if you wanted to maybe keep it more private, then I think you'd have to find a different third party service or write your own endpoint that kind of forwards emails to you. But I just wanted to show you all this. If you're trying to build out some type of contact us form or whatever form, check out this uh, service. It's really cool. If you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Also leave a comment below if you have a preferred way of sending emails or submitting contact forms and storing that data. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to have other videos like this that should hopefully help you become a better web developer in the future.